In just over three weeks, Vermonters will take part in that annual spring tradition, town meeting, or local election day. It is also the day Vermont will hold its presidential primaries, part of Super Tuesday. Burlington will elect a new mayor for the first time in a dozen years. Moreau Weinberger is moving on, and in an interview this week, he talks about what interests him next, what's left to do before he leaves the corner office. Does it feel odd yet? I do have that sense that the end is, is coming. Um, we're working very hard. The well, not the end, end. Yeah, but <laughs> that the end of the administration is coming. Um, uh, it, it, is, it is disorienting after being in this role for 12 years. Um, we're, what, what I'm focused on, what the whole administration is focused on is, is getting as much done in those last two months as possible. We've got a long you. list of things that we yeah, still want to Yeah, let's talk about some of that. Yeah. What are your prior, what are you trying to get done before you leave? We have a couple big housing initiatives that we're working very hard on. These are everything from, it's actually, we have housing policy issues with this neighborhood code, which would really be a, uh, create more housing opportunities throughout the city, which I think is you know, critical given the housing pressures we're facing. We have this agreement we've been negotiating for a year with UVM that could have big implications on the, on the future of student housing. Um, and then there are a couple big projects that are, are not going to get done in the next couple months, but it, we can get to critical stages. The, in the south end, we will be talking to the council on Monday night about an MOU with the developer down there. The developers who built Hula are now trying to build housing there. We're trying to have an MOU in place. Uh, to kind of guide the city relationship going forward. And we're even uh, working with uh, Eric Farrell um, <clears throat> to see if we can have a, a plan in front of the council that could be the basis for a gateway block memorial redevelopment in the future. So some big stuff. That would be a big step. Yeah. Uh, uh, about UVM, is the agreement, uh, does the agreement cap future student enrollment growth? Um, uh, this is entirely for the Trinity campus? That's where it started. Um, what happened uh, uh, recently in, is that we announced that uh, President Garamel and I had expanded the conversation to encompass three major UVM on sites. So the Trinity campus, the rugby field, and that enormous parking lot that is right next to the Waterman building. And under the current uh, proposed agreement, which is public, the, all, the city would change the zoning on all three of those sites. And in return, the, uh, the, the UVM would be committing for the first time, really, to uh, that, that they would be engaged in community impacts on, on housing going forward. That, they're, that they basically commit to about a three, the, keeping the student body at a, about the same level that they are now and to building hundreds of new beds. If the, if the agreement is approved and the projects that are envisioned as part of this agreement are built, we will have less pressure from student housing than we've had in decades. There are so many new people that are, are investing in the downtown. In many ways, the future of Burlington has never been brighter. This week, we, uh, you announced the commencement of the uh, Great Streets Main Street Renaissance. Yeah. Uh, it's going to change Main Street quite a bit uh, it, with new features, and a, it's a, sort of a gateway. Um, and Main Street's already a bit ripped up this week. Uh, it, that was a priority for you. Yeah, it sure was, Stuart. Um, in many ways, this project started the day I was elected. That was the day that voters also approved the creation of this TIF district 12 years ago, which is the financing tool, where, which is allowing us to put $30 million of investment into Main Street without impacting existing taxpayers at all. This is, this is a project that is, that is entirely paid for by future taxes generated by new development along that corridor mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and nearby parts of the downtown. And yeah, this is gonna be a huge improvement of this entrance into, into our city. We are gonna have, uh, it, we're gonna have much wider sidewalks. We are gonna have protected bike lanes. There will be, uh, it will be a greener downtown in the sense that there will be much healthier and bigger street trees and these beautiful landscape gardens that, uh, that the kind, as you see along St. Paul Street, the new mm -hmm. section there, it's, it's going to ex connect the Church Street Marketplace to the waterfront with this 
uh, greatly improved Main Street that we, we've never had before. This, you know, I've been to other cities that have gone through this type of modern uh, Main Street um, <clears throat> redesign and, and rebuilding, and it ha this will have a transformative. It's, it's had a transformative effect on these other communities. It's going to make Burlington even better. It's also going to, uh, we believe, really increase the appeal and the uh, possibility, and with some sites because of some of the subsurface work we're doing, of making millions of dollars of investments in new housing and businesses in Burlington. It should really, f it should enhance and enable a great deal of downtown investment. Just a quick word about what we used to call <coughs> the Southern Connector, now the Champlain Parkway, which yes. might finally be about to, <laughs> um, you know, have meaningfully open. Yes, Stuart. Uh, you know, I'm happy to say that after 50 years of waiting, the, the parkway is now ahead of schedule. And uh, <laughs> a lot of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, a, a lot of work got done in 2023, yeah. um, and there is a little bit more that needs to take place. There's, there's a winter shutdown going on right now, but as soon as the the weather warms, there's some last work to take place, and then that first phase will open, which will have is the new roadway that spans all the way from. Lakeside Avenue to Home Avenue. Something else that needs to happen in 2024 is the start of the second phase, which is the phase would actually connect it to the highway. And uh, there, so there's, there's a, still a ways to go, but yes, absolutely. As you said, there will be a section of this open at long last in the weeks ahead. Right outside your door is probably the most famous street, uh, most often photographed street in our state. And uh, it is not lost on you. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the health of the Church Street Marketplace. They don't like what they see sometimes. Yeah. And as the weather warms in the months ahead, um, there's concern. We're seeing retailers leave. Um, some of that may be cyclical, but it's undeniable, mm -hmm. right? There is some stress uh, and public safety concern. Yeah. You're leaving the Church Street Marketplace in what condition? <clears throat> so, um, so you know, the way you ask that question, what condition were you leaving in? Well, one thing that physically there is some additional infrastructure work that's uh, going to, that we've gotten a million dollars from the federal government that will go into further upkeep uh, of the, of the, uh, the street in the, in the short period ahead. Um, listen, the public safety situation we faced that I've been very loud about yeah. since things started going the wrong direction in 2020, since the uh, council decision that, had, that led to such a dramatic loss in officers, this has been very, this has been one of the biggest challenges the city has faced in, in years, and we're not all the way through that. We are making progress. The police department is, 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 is a bigger department than it was a year ago. We just were at a promotion ceremony last week. We have, uh, we hired numerous new staffers that were being promoted. Um, but we got, we, got, we, got, we got a long way to go with that still. I would say the biggest um, impact on what happened in 2023 was the state decision to put hundreds of Vermonters out of the hotels and on the street. It was like a light switch. We felt the impact of that decision in, on Church Street in the downtown um, as soon as that happened. And uh, one very active debate we're having right now is I think it's critical that the state not make that same mistake again. Right now, the Agency of Human Services is saying they want to put uh, out of the hotels hundreds of Vermonters on April 1st. I'm opposed to that. We've been writing letters and are urging the state to go in a different direction to keep everyone housed in the hotels and they can be, until they can be permanently placed. Here in Chittenden County, we've made great progress placing uh, people in permanent housing since, since the hotel program was extended last summer, it's critical that that, that continues. So if you, I, this is a major challenge for sure, Stuart, that we're still facing and is going to need to stay the focus of, of the city in the year ahead. We need the state to be a full partner in that as well. What else would you really, really like from the legislature this session? <clears throat> so the, my, my second priority, and in, in any other year, I think it'd be the top priority, but if you didn't have the urgency of this homelessness crisis, is Act 250 reform. We, um, uh, the, 
at the root of our housing challenges, at the root of our, the, the second worst homelessness rate in the country is that we have made it way too hard to build homes in, in Vermont. Some of that is about local regulation, and I've spent the last 12 years really trying to change the way Burlington zoning works to enable housing investment to happen here in Burlington. A big part of the problem, however, has also been Act 250. We are the only state in the country that has a state land use regulation like this. It is an enormous obstacle to the creation of new homes, and it is, it is strangling us as a state. It is, uh, it is the biggest issue with business growth. It is the biggest issue driving the homelessness levels we face now. I mean, I'm hopeful it, it is, there's a huge amount of conversation happening on it now. It is finally getting the attention that it fully deserves. There's a real risk though. There is, as I'm sitting here in Burlington, it doesn't seem that a consensus has yet materialized around any one plan. And um, it's critical that they get something big done this year. So it'll be the first um, mayoral election in a long time that won't have your name on the ballot. Is it strange? Are you following the campaign closely? <clears throat> it, it, it is bittersweet. Um, I'm definitely, you know, I've, I've loved this job. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to miss it for, for sure. Um, I am watching, of course, the, the campaign as best I can. Um, I'm encouraged that both of the major party candidates are focused on uh, the issues that seem most important to me, housing, public safety, <clears throat> um, fiscal responsibility. And these are, uh, to me, those are really the, the three big areas that um, I have tried to bring focus and progress to. And I'm glad to see both campaigns uh, uh, continue to bring focus and commitments there. Um, I'm, I'm supporting Joan Shannon in this, uh, in this campaign. Um, from my perspective, Joan was courageous and right on public safety issues through this very challenging time, and she's the right person to lead the rebuilding of the police department and, the, uh, and, and getting the downtown and the full community to the welcoming, safe place that you know, we have long enjoyed. Uh, I um, also uh, you know, appreciate what Joan, Joan the, the petitions she's taken uh, on housing and her commitment to continuing the public, uh, the, the fiscal responsibility that has been uh, such a big change from the last time there was a progressive mayor. You know, when I came into office, we were $23 million in the red. We now have almost $7 million in, in reserves. That kind of fisc fiscal responsibility is critical to making progress on any other of the other uh, goals that we have as a community, and I, I believe Joan knows that, and we'll stay focused on it. Uh, have you uh, <clears throat> focused yourself on what's next? Do you want to plunge into a, another full-time job? Obviously, there's a lot of buzz buzz about uh, your political ambition. <clears throat> sure, so what, I, what I've made a decision on is to throw myself into finishing this job right yeah. and getting as much done over the next couple months as, as, as I can. Um, I, you know, have, I, I, I don't, I'm not retiring. I, I think I've got a lot left to give professionally. Uh, uh, I, there's certainly clear to me that the state has some real challenges with respect to housing and homelessness with the drug crisis we're facing right now. Uh, I think we should be doing even more on climate, a lot more on climate. If there's an opportunity for me to have a meaningful public role on those, um, on those issues, I, I'm, I'm gonna look very hard at it. But at this point, sitting here at the beginning of February, I um, haven't made any decisions about that. Understood, but uh, is there anything, uh, would you serve in the legislature? Or is, would you, <coughs> you've been an executive uh, of the state's largest city. Is that a, a role that better suits you? I, um, thing I do love about being in the executive branch is that you are empowered to get things done, sure. that you can make on the ground progress in, in, in people's lives, and uh, that does appeal to me a lot. But running against Bill Scott, uh, many call a suicide mission. Is that something, I mean, he hasn't said what he's going to do either, as you well know. <clears throat> yeah, he, he has. He's, he, he has not made uh, clear what his plans are, and again, I'm I'm focused on finishing this job right, and um, and then we'll see what happens after that. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Uh, good conversation. Appreciate Stuart, it. Thank you. I'm. Uh, I remember. Um, I, I remember well uh, us talking the 
the night that I was, was first elected. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's been an honor to work uh, alongside you through all this. I appreciate the, the, the time that we've worked together and I wish you the best in whatever is next for you. I'll have a word about that last part later. <laughs>